Think safety first. Prior to performing any work, make sure any and all necessary safety procedures have been followed and the elevator has been taken out of service. Follow any and all necessary electrical safety requirements when working with and around electricity and make sure proper PPE is worn. When hoisting equipment, ensure that proper lifting equipment and safe lifting practices are followed. For illustration purposes, the Hollister Whitney GT11 OH geared traction machine is used in the video to detail the process of installing the new traction wheel shaft. The process steps are the same for the GT31 OH geared traction machine. Furthermore, if replacing the shaft on an OD or BS machine, the initial disassembly and reassembly steps follow the same basic process as is shown up until the point of reinstalling the outboard stands. If assistance is required, please contact Hollister Whitney Technical Support at 217-222-0466. Required Tools for Shaft Replacement The following kits and tools will be needed for shaft replacement. 1. An appropriate shaft retrofit kit, which is supplied by Vantage. A. The retrofit kit will come with a drawing of the components inside the crate. Please inspect the contents of the crate to ensure that all of the components on the drawing are included in the kit. If part is missing, contact Hollister Whitney Technical Support for any missing parts. 2. A retrofit tool kit which is supplied by Vantage. A. The retrofit tool kit will come with a drawing of the components inside the box. Please inspect the contents of the box to ensure that all of its components on the drawing are included in the kit. If a part is missing, contact Hollister Whitney Technical Support for any missing parts. 3. The following required tools are not supplied by Vantage. A. Half-inch drive impact driver, used for removing and reinstalling fasteners. B. Deep well socket set, used for removing and reinstalling fasteners. C. Small pry bar, used for lifting outboard stand. D. Emery cloth, used for removing burrs and cleaning surface. E. 1 and an eighth inch wrench used for removing and reinstalling fasteners. F. 3 quarter inch wrench, used for removing and reinstalling oil plug. G. Adjustable wrench, used for removing and reinstalling fasteners. H. Torque wrench, used for tightening fasteners. I. Flat tip screwdriver or small chisel, used for the bending tabs on shaft lock washer. J. Paper towels or rags, used for cleaning components. K. Bucket used for holding the machine gearbox oil. L. Four short hoisting straps, used for hoisting various components. M. Hoisting device used for hoisting various components. N. Putty knife, used for removing silicone caulk. O. Brass hammer, used for tapping components into position. P. Propane torch with rosebud head, used for heating up bronze gear and traction wheel hub. Initial prep work for disassembly. First, check the backlash of the machine using the dial indicator supplied in the toolkit. Install the dial indicator as shown. Rotate the traction wheel clockwise and counterclockwise to determine the total backlash as shown by the dial indicator. Record the backlash on the outboard stand rope retainer plate mounting surface. This measurement will be used for reference at the end of the reassembly process. Next, mark the position of the notch feature on the outer diameter of the flange of the non-traction wheel side eccentric relative to the upper and lower housing assembly as shown. Be sure the mark is across both the eccentric and the upper and lower housing assembly. This mark will be used as a reference during the reassembly process. Now mark the location of the outboard stand shims relative to the outboard stand and machine base. Be sure the marks are such that they are easily identified between the left and right shim packs and cover the outboard stand, shims, and machine base. These marks will be used as a reference during the reassembly process. Next, using a wrench, loosen the oil drain plug and drain the oil from the machine. Make sure to retain the oil as it will be reused.
a quart of oil is included in the retrofit kit in case some of the oil is spilled during the draining process. Outboard Stand Disassembly The next step is to disassemble the outboard stand from the machine. Start by removing the shaft cover from the outboard stand by removing the three bolts that secure it to the outboard stand. Removing the shaft cover exposes the shaft lock nut, shaft lock nut washer, and bearing retainer plate, which will now be removed. Using a flat tip screwdriver or small chisel, bend back any shaft lock nut tabs, which have been previously bent over. Then using the shaft lock nut spanner wrench provided in the retrofit toolkit, remove the shaft lock nut and shaft lock nut washer. Now remove the bearing retention plate. Flip the bearing retention plate around so that its outside diameter touches the outer race of the bearing when reinstalled. Next, reinstall the shaft lock nut and tighten until snug. This process will prevent the bearing seals from becoming disengaged when removing the outboard stand. Next, remove the four bolts which secure the outboard stand to the machine base and remove the shims. It may be necessary to slightly pry up on the outboard stand to remove the shims. The shims will be reused with the retrofit kit. Once the shims have been removed, insert one of the eye bolts provided in the tool kit into the threaded hole on top of the outboard stand. Use a hoisting device to take the pressure off the outboard stand bearing so that the outboard stand can be pulled off straight and level with minimal effort. The outboard stand bore to bearing outside diameter is a slip fit and should not require excessive force or a pulling device. Traction Wheel and Traction Wheel Hub Disassembly The next step is to disassemble the traction wheel and traction wheel hub assembly. First, remove the shaft lock nut, bearing retainer, and the outboard stand bearing. Take care not to displace the seal of the bearing during the removal process. The bearing to shaft interface is a slip fit and should slide off from the shaft relatively easily. However, in some cases, the outboard stand bearing may be difficult to remove due to rust. If the bearing is difficult to disassemble, then use the traction wheel puller provided in the toolkit to remove both the traction wheel and outboard stand bearing simultaneously. The shaft lock nut, shaft lock nut washer, bearing retention plate, and the outboard stand bearing will be reused with the retrofit kit. To remove the traction wheel and traction wheel hub assembly, place the two threaded rods into the two threaded holes in the traction wheel as shown. The threaded rods, puller, puller nuts, and puller washers are provided in the retrofit tool kit. Next, place the puller over the two threaded rods so that the puller engages with the traction wheel shaft. Apply the two puller nuts and two puller washers to the threaded rods and tighten until snug. Now remove the top body bolt which holds the traction wheel to the traction wheel hub and run a strap through the hole. Use the hoisting device to support the traction wheel and hub assembly for removal. Next, tighten the traction wheel puller nuts alternating back and forth between the nuts until the traction wheel and hub assembly becomes disengaged from the tapered traction wheel shaft. Heat may need to be applied to the traction wheel to aid in the removal process. After the traction wheel and traction wheel hub have come free from the tapered shaft, remove the traction wheel puller threaded rods and puller bar. Using the hoist, fully remove the traction wheel and traction wheel hub assembly and place on the floor with the outside of the assembly laying on the floor as shown. The traction wheel will be used as a fixture for the center assembly reassembly later in the process. With the traction wheel assembly removed, Mark the position of the notch feature on the outer diameter of the flange of the traction wheel side eccentric relative to the upper and lower housing assembly as shown. Upper Housing Disassembly The next step is to disassemble the upper housing. First, remove all four of the traction wheel side eccentric bolts. Note that there are no shims under the traction wheel side eccentric bolts. Next, remove the non-traction wheel side eccentric bolts. Please note that there are shims under these bolts. Remove the bolts with shims and then temporarily reinstall the shims on the opposite side of the bolts and insert them back into the threaded holes in the eccentric as shown. Now, 
remove the eight bolts which are used to hold the upper housing to the lower housing. Using the eccentric bolts, which were removed from the traction wheel side eccentric, place the bolts into the threaded holes located at two corners of the upper housing as shown. The bolts will be used as jack bolts to help separate the upper housing from the housing because the two are sealed together using silicone. A small pry bar may be necessary to complete the separation of the upper and lower housing. Remove the two jack bolts once the upper and lower housing seal has been broken so that the upper housing can be removed from the assembly. Next, use two of the eye bolts which were provided with the toolkit and run a strap through the eyes. Using the hoist, hoist the upper housing from the lower housing and set aside. Now with a hoist and hoist strap supporting the center assembly on either side of the gear hub, lift the center assembly from the lower housing as shown and lay on the floor. Ensure that the upper housing is separated from the lower housing far enough to clear the alignment pins with the jack bolts or pry with a bar, then remove the upper housing. Center assembly disassembly from the gearbox. The next step is to disassemble the original center assembly from the gearbox. First, attach a strap on each side of the gear hub as shown, and using the hoist, slightly lift the center assembly from the gearbox. With the original center assembly slightly elevated, remove the traction wheel side eccentric and set to the side. Once the traction wheel side eccentric has been removed, hoist the center assembly from the gearbox and place the assembly on the floor. With the center assembly on the floor, rearrange the straps as shown so that the center assembly can be hoisted into an upright position from the floor. Next, place the tapered end of the center assembly into the traction wheel as shown. The traction wheel will be used as a fixture for holding the center assembly for removal of the eccentric and bronze gear. Prior to fully setting the center assembly into the traction wheel, remove the shaft key. A small chisel may be required to remove the shaft key. The key will be reused with the retrofit kit. Original Center Assembly Eccentric in Bronze Gear Disassembly The next step is to disassemble the non-traction wheel side assembly eccentric in bronze gear. With the original center assembly held safely by the traction wheel in the upright position, remove the hoisting straps. Next, back the six cone point set screws out from the non-traction wheel side eccentric using the T-handle hex key supplied in the retrofit toolkit. The six cone point set screws do not need to be fully disassembled from the eccentric as shown. Once all six cone point set screws have been backed out, remove the non-traction wheel side eccentric and set aside. The non-traction wheel side eccentric will be reused with the retrofit kit. Now that the non-traction wheel side eccentric has been removed, remove the bolts and nuts which hold the bronze gear to the gear hub as shown. The bolts will need to be fully removed by gently tapping on the threaded end of the bolts with a brass hammer. With the body bolts removed, heat the gear until it expands enough to spin freely on the gear hub and remove the gear. It may be necessary to lightly tap around the gear with blocking and a soft hammer to aid in its removal and set the bronze gear aside. Be sure to wear appropriate gloves while removing the bronze gear from the gear hub as the gear will be very hot. The bronze gear and gear body bolts will be reused with the retrofit kit. Removal of the original center assembly from the traction wheel. The next step is the removal of the original center assembly from the traction wheel. First, place three of the eye bolts which were provided with the toolkit into the hub flange as shown. Next, place hoisting straps through the eye bolts and hoist the old center assembly out of the traction wheel. This assembly will not be reused. Reassembly of the center assembly with the new shaft retrofit. The next step is to assemble the original bronze gear and the original eccentric to the new shaft and hub assembly. First, remove the three eye bolts from the original center assembly and thread them into the hub flange of the new center assembly. Run straps through the eye bolts as shown 
and hoist the new center assembly over the traction wheel. Gently place the new center assembly into the traction wheel. Be careful not to damage the threads on the end of the shaft when placing the new center assembly into the traction wheel. Now that the new center assembly has been placed in the traction wheel, remove the three eye bolts. Next, thoroughly clean the gear hub flange, removing all burrs to ensure that the bronze gear will seat completely flush to the hub flange when reassembled. Next, thoroughly clean the inner gear flange, removing all burrs to ensure that the bronze gear will seat completely flush to the hub flange when reassembled. Emery cloth will likely need to be used for cleaning both the hub flange and gear flange. Be sure to wear appropriate gloves while removing the bronze gear from the gear hub as the gear will be extremely hot. Place the bronze gear onto the gear hub as shown. Apply heat in a circular pattern until the bronze gear has expanded enough to be able to be seated into place. As soon as the bronze gear is dropped into position and is mounted flush to the gear hub, Rotate the gear so that the bolt holes in the bronze gear align with the bolt holes in the gear hub and install the two bolts provided with the retrofit kit. These two bolts will be used temporarily to hold the bronze gear to the hub for the next step. Let the gear cool until it is at a manageable temperature. After the gear has cooled to a manageable temperature, ream the four bolt holes which do not have the temporary bolts with the three quarter inch reamer and 12-point socket which are supplied with a retrofit toolkit. After reaming the holes, be sure to clean the gear and remove any burrs which may have been generated during the reaming process. Next, using an impact driver, install four of the original body bolts and nuts, such as that the nuts is on the traction wheel side of the assembly as shown. A cross pattern should be used when tightening the bolts and nuts. Next, remove the two temporary bolts and ream the remaining two holes. After reaming the holes, be sure to clean the gear and remove any burrs which may have been generated during the reaming process. Now install the remaining two body bolts and nuts using the impact driver. Next, inspect and clean the inner bore and outer diameter of both the eccentrics. Verify that the O-ring on both eccentric is not damaged. If the O-ring is damaged, remove and replace the damaged O-ring with a new O-ring, which is supplied in the retrofit kit. Next, install the original non-traction wheel side eccentric over the bearing. A gentle tap from a hammer may be necessary to fully seat the eccentric over the bearing. Next, using the T-handle hex key, back out each of the six cone point set screws from the eccentric one at a time. Before reinstalling each cone point set screw, dip the set screw into Loctite 243 as shown. The Loctite 243 is provided with the toolkit. Using the T-handle hex key, reinstall each set screw and tighten. Reassembly of the new center assembly into the gearbox. The next step is to reassemble the new center assembly into the gearbox. First, remove any old silicone, dirt, and debris from the lower housing to upper mounting surface on the lower housing as well as the eccentric bore of the lower housing. Now assemble the three eye bolts into the bronze gear as shown. Run straps through the three eye bolts, then hook the ends of the straps with the hoisting device. Remove the new center assembly from the traction wheel and set it on the floor. Next, remove the three eye bolts and hoisting straps from the center assembly so that the hoisting straps can be reconfigured for placing the center assembly into the gearbox. Next, take two hoisting straps and wrap them around either side of the gear hub as shown. The center assembly is now able to be hoisted in a horizontal orientation so that it can be placed into the gearbox. Using the hoisting device, Gently lower the new center assembly into the lower housing and remove the hoisting straps. Next, install the traction wheel side eccentric, being sure to not damage the original O-ring. This process will likely require two people, one person to slide the eccentric over the bearing and the other person to slightly elevate the end of the drive shaft. Please note 
that if the original O-ring was damaged during removal, the retrofit kit includes two new O-rings if needed. At this point, rotate both eccentrics back to their original positions using the indicator lines which were marked during the initial disassembly process. Upper Housing Reassembly to Lower Housing The next step is to reassemble the upper housing to the lower housing. First, thoroughly clean the upper housing to lower housing mating surface on the upper housing. Remove all old silicone, dirt, and debris to ensure a proper fit between the upper housing, lower housing, and eccentrics. Next, using the tube of silicone which is included in the retrofit kit, apply a bead of the silicone caulk to the lower housing to upper housing mating surface on the lower housing. Apply the silicone caulk in a pattern as shown. Be sure to apply a generous amount of caulk between the lower housing bore and the outside diameter of the eccentric. Now thread two of the eye bolts into the upper housing and apply the hoisting straps. Hoist the upper housing and gently lower onto the lower housing in center assembly. Be careful to not damage the O-rings as this operation is performed. In addition, be careful to not damage the alignment pins which are located on the lower housing. A gentle tapping with a brass hammer may be necessary to fully seat the lower housing to upper housing. Next, partially reinstall the eight upper housing to lower housing bolts. Do not fully seat the bolts at this point, as you will be required to slightly move the two eccentrics to install the eccentric bolts and shims. Next, Partially reinstall the four bolts on the traction wheel side eccentrics. Now reinstall the non-traction wheel side bolts and shims on the non-traction wheel side eccentric as shown. Additional shims are included in the retrofit kit if necessary. Next, using an impact driver, fully seat the eight upper to lower housing bolts. Then, fully seat all of the bolts for both eccentrics as shown. Finally, remove all of the excess silicone between the upper and lower housing. Checking, setting the worm and gear contact pattern. The next step is to check the worm and gear contact pattern. First, using the ratchet strap supplied with the retrofit toolkit, attach the ratchet strap to the shaft and machine base as shown. The ratchet strap is meant to apply a small amount of drag to the system to aid in the bluing wipe between the worm and the gear. The ratchet strap should only be tightened enough to apply minimal drag to the system. Next, remove the oil cap so that the bronze gear can be seen. Then, using the aerosol bluing supplied with retrofit kit, spray bluing onto the exposed bronze gear teeth. Next, rotate the sheave in both directions and stop the gear where the blued section is visible. Next, visually check the pattern. The ideal pattern would be a center pattern on both flanks of the gear tooth as illustrated. For an additional visual representation of an ideal pattern, refer to Bulletin 1187 on the Technical Support section of the Hollister Whitney website. The pattern should be acceptable without any adjustments. However, if the pattern needs to be adjusted, please go to the Hollister Whitney YouTube channel and go to the 1120 mark of the GT Machine Disassembly and Reassembly video for instructions on how to set the pattern. The video will be slightly different because the upper housing is shown removed, but the adjustment principle remains the same. Traction Wheel Reassembly to Drive Shaft The next step is to reassemble the traction wheel and hub assembly to the drive shaft. First, place a hoist strap between the bolt hole and the traction wheel and hoist the traction wheel from the floor. Next, remove the protective sleeve from the end of the shaft and then thoroughly clean both the traction wheel drive shaft. Next, thoroughly clean the tapered bore in the traction wheel. If there is rust present in the hub bore, be sure to use emery cloth to remove the rust. Next, reinstall the key into the shaft then hoist the traction wheel over the shaft. Take care not to damage the threads on the end of the shaft. It may be necessary to rotate the drive shaft to align the drive shaft key to the keyway in the traction wheel hub. To rotate the drive shaft for alignment, 
disengage the brakes using the manual brake release handle and rotate brake drum as shown. Rotating the brake drum clockwise or counterclockwise will rotate the drive shaft and align the key and keyway. Once the key and keyway have been aligned, slide the traction wheel over the shaft and push the traction wheel as far up the shaft as possible. Next, remove the hoisting strap from the traction wheel and reinstall the traction wheel hub to the traction wheel body, which was previously removed. Outboard Stand Reassembly The next step is to reassemble the outboard stand to the machine assembly. First, slide the outboard stand bearing onto the exposed end of the drive shaft. Then, assemble the bearing retainer onto the shaft. The orientation of the bearing retainer must be as shown, with the outer ring of the bearing retainer butting up against the outer race of the bearing. This will prevent the bearing seal from becoming disengaged when reinstalling the outboard stand. Next, assemble the bearing lock nut onto the threaded end of the shaft and tighten against the bearing retainer plate until snug. Next, hoist the outboard stand to the machine and slide the outboard stand over the bearing. A gentle tap with a brass hammer may be necessary to fully seat the outboard stand against the dowel pins which are located at the bottom of the machine base. Please note there will be a slight gap between the bottom of the outboard stand and the machine base. Next, reinstall the four bolts used to retain the outboard stand loosely to the machine base. As shown, do not tighten the four bolts at this point, as shims will be added in the next process step. Next, remove the hoisting eye bolt from the outboard stand. Using the dial indicator provided with the Retrofit Toolkit, place the dial indicator on the top of the traction wheel as shown and zero out the indicator. Leave the indicator in place throughout the process. There will be a small gap between the bottom of the outboard stand and the machine base, which requires shims. Next, pry up on the outboard stand and note the amount of displacement from the dial indicator. This process will consume the free play in the system. Whatever the reading is, the target value for the final position of the dial indicator, after all adjustments have been made, will be one half of that value. For example, if when pried up the indicator registered 0.008 inches, then the final indicator value after all adjustments have been made will be 0.004 inches. Next, add shims under the outboard stand. Start by inserting as many shims as possible into the gap between the outboard stand and machine base. The shims will likely be a combination of original shims and new shims which are provided with the retrofit kit. The shims come in 0.005 inch, 0.010 inch, and 0.032 thickness. You may need to gently pry up the outboard stand in order to get the final shim in place. Next, if necessary, gently pry the outboard stand with a pry bar to remove the shims. Next, add the correct quantity of shims to the initial shim pack to attempt to register one half of the original value indicated on the dial indicator. There should be an equal number of shims and thicknesses in each shim pack. Next, use a small pry bar to lift up on the outboard stand in order to fit the now thicker shim packs between the outboard stand and the machine base and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator should read half the original value. In this example, it should register 0.004 inches since the original value was 0.008 inches. This process may take several attempts of adding various thickness shims to achieve the desired indicator reading. Next, check to make sure that the bottom of the outboard stand is fully seated against the dowel pins at the bottom of the base. If it is not fully seated, gently tap the bottom of the outboard stand with a brass hammer. After fully seating the outboard stand against the pins, ensure the dial indicator remains in the required range. Next, tighten the four outboard stand bolts and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator reading will likely decrease by several thousandths of an inch due to the tightening of the outboard stand bolts. The alignment is acceptable as long as the dial indicator does not go below zero. Next, Fully tighten the four outboard stand bolts to 200 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. After tightening, 
check to make sure the dial indicator did not drop below the zero mark. Next, remove the shaft lock nut and bearing retainer plate as shown. Then, flip the bearing retainer plate around so that the inner diameter of the bearing retainer plate engages the inner bearing race of the bearing. Then reinstall the bearing lock nut washer, followed by the bearing lock nut. Using the spanner wrench supplied with the retrofit toolkit, tighten the bearing lock nut as much as possible. A brass hammer will be required to tighten the bearing lock nut fully to align a shaft lock nut washer tab to a slot in the bearing lock nut washer. Always tighten to get tab to slot alignment. Do not loosen. Next, bend a washer lock tab into a slot on the lock washer. Next, reinstall the bearing cover using the original three bolts. The following process is used for the GT11 and GT31 overhead deflector and basement set machines. Next, hoist the outboard stand to the machine and slide the outboard stand over the bearing. Using the dial indicator provided with the retrofit toolkit, place the dial indicator on the top of the shaft as shown and zero out the indicator. Leave the indicator in place throughout the process. There will be a small gap between the bottom of the outboard stand and the machine base, which requires shims. Next, lift up on the end of the shaft and note the amount of displacement from the dial indicator. This will consume the free play in the system. Whatever the reading is, the target value for the final position of the dial indicator after all the adjustments have been made will be one half of that value. For example, if when pried up the indicator registered 0.012 inches, then the final indicator value after all the adjustments have been made will be 0.006 inches. Record the displacement value on top of the inner outboard stand. Next, loosely reinstall all four of the inner outboard stand bolts. The bolts should remain loose so that the shims can be placed under the inner outboard stand. Ensure the dowel pins are in contact with the bottom of the inner outboard stand. Next, add shims to the inner outboard stand on both sides. Start by inserting as many shims as possible into the gap between the inner outboard stand and machine base. The shims will likely be a combination of the original shims and new shims which are provided with the retrofit kit. The shims come in 0.005 inches, 0.010 inches, and 0.032 inch thicknesses. You may need to gently pry up the outboard stand in order to get the final shim in place. The inner outboard stand will wobble until the appropriate number of shims is finally in place. Next, add the correct quantity of shims to the initial shim packs to attempt to register one half of the original value indicated on the dial indicator as shown. There should be an equal number of shims and thicknesses in each shim pack. Next, use a small pry bar to lift up on the inner outboard stand in order to fit the now thicker shim pack between the outboard stand and the machine base, and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator should read half the original value shown in. The dial indicator should read half. This process may take several attempts of adding various thickness shims to achieve the desired indicator reading. Next, Check to make sure that the bottom of the inner outboard stand remain fully seated against the dowel pins at the bottom of the base. If it is not fully seated, gently tap the bottom of the outboard stand with a brass hammer. After fully seating the inner outboard stand against the pins, ensure the dial indicator remains in the required range. Next, tighten the four outboard stand bolts and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator reading will likely decrease by several thousandths of an inch due to the tightening of the outboard stand bolts. The alignment is acceptable as long as the dial indicator does not go below zero. Next, fully tighten the four outboard stand bolts to 200 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. After tightening, check to make sure the dial indicator did not drop below the zero mark. The next step is to reassemble the traction wheel and hub assembly to the drive shaft. First, place a hoist strap through the bolt hole in the traction wheel and hoist the traction wheel from the floor. Next, place hoisting strap through the empty bolt hole in the traction wheel assembly 
and hoist the traction wheel assembly from the floor. Next, reinstall the original shaft key into the shaft. Next, thoroughly clean the traction wheel drive shaft. If there is rust present in the hub bore, be sure to use emery cloth to remove the rust. Next, hoist the traction wheel assembly. It may be necessary to rotate the drive shaft to align the drive shaft key to the keyway in the traction wheel hub. To rotate the drive shaft for alignment, disengage the brakes using the manual brake release handle and rotate brake drum as shown. Rotating the brake drum clockwise or counterclockwise will rotate the drive shaft and align the key and keyway. Once the key and keyway have been aligned, slide the traction wheel over the shaft and push the traction wheel as far up the shaft as possible. The next step is to reassemble the outboard stand to the machine assembly. First, slide the outboard stand bearing onto the exposed end of the drive shaft. Then, assemble the bearing retainer onto the shaft. The orientation of the bearing retainer must be as shown, with the outer ring of the bearing retainer butting up against the outer race of the bearing. This will prevent the bearing seal from becoming disengaged when reinstalling the outboard stand. Next, assemble the bearing lock nut onto the threaded end of the shaft and tighten against the bearing retainer plate until snug. Next, remove the hoisting strap from the traction wheel and reinstall the traction wheel hub to traction wheel body bolt, which was previously removed. Next, hoist the outboard stand to the machine and slide the outboard stand over the bearing. Ensure the dowel pins are in contact with the bottom of the outer outboard stand. The bolts should remain loose so that shims can be placed under the inner outboard stand. Ensure the dowel pins are in contact with the bottom of the inner outboard stand. Next, remove the shaft lock nut and bearing retainer plate as shown. Then flip the bearing retainer plate around so that the inner diameter of the bearing retainer plate engages the inner bearing race of the bearing. Then reinstall the bearing lock nut washer followed by the bearing lock nut. Using the spanner wrench supplied with the retrofit toolkit, tighten the bearing lock nut as much as possible. A brass hammer will be required to tighten the bearing lock nut fully and to align a shaft lock nut washer tab to a slot in the bearing lock nut washer. Next, bend a washer lock tab into a slot in the lock washer. Next, place the dial indicator on top of the traction wheel as shown. Next, zero the dial indicator. Next, gently pry up on the outer outboard stand and measure the total deflection using the dial indicator. In this example, the deflection would be 0.012 inches. Next, add shims under the inner outboard stand on both sides. Start by inserting as many shims as possible into the gap between the inner outboard stand and machine base. The shims will likely be a combination of original shims and new shims which are provided with a retrofit kit. The shims come in 0.005 inches, 0.010 inches, and 0.32 inch thicknesses. You may also need to gently pry up the outboard stand in order to get the final shim in place. The inner outboard stand will wobble until the appropriate number of shims is finally in place. Next, add the correct quantity of shims to the initial shim packs to attempt to register half of the original value indicated on the dial indicator as shown. There should be an equal number of shims and thicknesses in each shim pack. Next, use a small pry bar to lift the outer outboard stand to fit the now thicker shim pack between the outboard stand and the machine base, and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator should read half the original value shown. In this example, it should read 0.006 inches. This process may take several attempts of adding various thickness shims to achieve the desired indicator reading. Furthermore, when enough shims are installed, you should not be able to easily rock the outer outboard stand back and forth. Next, tighten the four outboard bolts and check the dial indicator. The dial indicator reading will likely decrease by several thousandths of an inch due to the tightening of the outboard stand bolts. The alignment is acceptable as long as the dial indicator does not go below zero. Next, fully tighten the four outboard stand bolts to 200 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. After tightening, 
check to make sure the dial indicator did not drop below the zero mark. The following is for all machine models. Next, as was done in the first step, check the backlash of the gear to ensure it is acceptable. The backlash should be within plus or minus 0.002 inches of the original backlash recorded on the outboard stand rope retainer plate mounting surface. If the backlash is greater or less than plus or minus 0.002 inches, contact Hollister Whitney Technical Support. The next step is to reassemble the remaining components. Next, reinstall the oil plug and add the original oil back into the gearbox. Fill the gearbox with the original oil until the oil level is at the same midline of the oil sight glass. A quart of oil has been provided with the retrofit kit in case additional oil is required. The oil level should be between one-eighth of an inch from the top of the oil sight glass to one-eighth above the bottom of the oil sight glass. Next, screw the oil cap back onto the upper housing. Next, using the tamper paint supplied in the toolkit, place tamper marks across all outboard stand bolts. Finally, place the orange warning label onto the outboard stand as shown. The machine is now ready to be placed back in service. If there are any questions or issues, please contact Hollister Whitney Technical Support at 217-222-0466.